Dave here. How are you? Today is the 20th of December 2020, five days till Christmas. I hope you've been well and uh, staying safe and all of that stuff. And uh, morning to everyone who's been jumping in and uh, saying hi. Just been watching Cole Hosey's uh, show, his live show. If you haven't caught it, I highly recommend you catch it. If you're interested in dovetails or box making at all, Cole is excellent. Thank you, Peter, for letting me know that about the video and the audio. All good. Excellent. All right, today on the show, because we're nearly at Christmas, I haven't really had a lot of time to prepare. So I'm going to do something, with, I'm going to revise what I did a few years ago, and that was using this little uh, machine here for sharpening drill bits. Now you can sharpen drill bits. Oh, give me a second, I've got to do this. You'll probably get another post on Facebook straight away. Anyway, you can sharpen a drill bit on a bench grinder. I've got a bench grinder over the back there. You can do it, but it is really difficult. The reason being, there's a couple of angles on a drill bit that you really need to be aware of. For a start, you've got the tip of the drill has these angles off the front, and they normally are corresponding to the same kind of an angle that a countersink drill is. So a countersink drill bit, so there you can use a drill bit ordinarily for uh, countersinking. I do that when I'm doing the T-tracks for my benches. When I put the Euro screws in here, I drill the hole through and I put an eight millimeter drill down because it will fit in between the T-track. Anything bigger will start attacking the edges uh, and that, that doesn't look good. So uh, this, in that situation, I need the drill bit to be sharpened at the same angle as the uh, countersink section of the Euro screws. And it works quite well, it works quite well. Now this thing is years and years old. I've had this for about 12 years. I'll show you the front. This is a Miller's Falls machine. And I've, as I said, I've had it for absolute eons and it will do ordinary drill bits plus also masonry drill bits. Now I did say that there was a couple of angles on steel drill bits that are designed for drilling into steel and also into timber. Normally people will use a brad point drill for timber, but if you're going to drill into something and you want to countersink, a, a, a drill that's designed for going to steel is, is the best. Now, they also have a, a backing off angle because as the drill's cutting, you can imagine that, say, say that this is the point, this is the, like the chisel at the, at the tip of the drill. As it's going in, it can't have a flat grind on it. It's also got to have a back grind a backward angle on it. So as it's going in, the, the other part of the, like, how do I explain this? It's not going to be stopping itself from actually cutting. We don't want it just to be polishing because <laughs> it's not going to get anywhere. The tip has to be up a little bit so it can cut. <clears throat> so we're going to do that. I'm going to do a few and I'm also going to, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm also going to sharpen some of my self-centering drills. Now, you may not be aware, you can do this. I ran into one of my Craig screws <laughs> when I was using this the other day, because uh, that's the way I build uh, drawers, Craig screw, the base and all of that together. And I was putting the full slide extensions or full extension slides in, and I drilled in and straight into a Craig screw. Craig screws are hardened steel, if you didn't know, and they're these aren't. <laughs> so these ones are probably just carbon steel. They're probably not even high speed steel. All right, so that's that's one thing we're going to be doing. Um, viewers projects. I've got a few viewers projects this week, and I encourage you, please send them in. That'd be fantastic if you could. Um, continue the build with the images of the draw unit and finished and in use. The, well, the whole quilting table has not been finished, but the draw unit and all of the drawers, and I was going to put a hopper on that unit but for storing quilts, but I decided to go with just a very, very deep drawer with a couple of drawer slides up the side, and it works great. A hopper was going to be too dangerous. It, I was concerned that it was just going to be too heavy, and as it came out, it might just take off. I didn't really want to research gas struts too much at this stage. Uh, and as it was going to be closing, it was going to go clunk, smash, and you know probably take people's fingers off if they had their finger in between the cabinet and the actual top of the drawer. 
So I went with draw slides again. I'll show you pictures of that. Um, the winner of the bow bandsaw guide. Now, if your name is, starts with P, you're in with a chance. Your first name starts with P, you are in with a chance. There we go. Can't say any more than that. Um, <clears throat> that is it. I'm going to have a quick drink of coffee. Now, I'm having a look there and I see the, um, the chat is kind of getting covered a little bit. I'm going to move it across a touch. That might be better. How's that? Any better? Let me have a look down the side here. G'day, Dave in the many faith. Good morning, Ian. Harry, how are you? John, uh, Eric, John Parra. Yeah, Brian, uh, Michael, Harry again, Carl, and an obligatory thumbs down viewer has chimed in. There you go, takes all sorts. That's the way it goes. Let's start with this drill sharpening. Oh, one other thing. I do this a lot, don't I? One other thing. Look at this. You know what this is? This is care of Derek Lark. I sent Derek a couple of dimensions and he 3D printed this for me. Now, what is it, you might say? Well, and a piece of rubber tube. Yeah, sorry, rubber inner tube. Look at this. Yes, yes, indeed. So that slides onto there. And I'll show you. Give me a sec. Here we go, here we go. Look at that. How cool is that? So thank you very much for that, Derek. He sent up a few for me. So I'm going to utilize that. Uh, right, let's get stuck into this drill sharpening. And we'll start with, we'll start with this one. This is a filthy, dirty looking drill bit. It's probably still sharp, hasn't been used, but let's get into it. G'day Vincent, how are you? Um, and I'm going to switch over to this camera over. It's got a new combination thickness planer in your shop, I notice in the show. Ray, yes indeed. Now, I'm going to quickly jump in here and say I am selling my long bed jointer. So this is a segmented head. So basically it's got a whole lot of little, you know, half inch wide blades that are rotatable. There's four, four sharp edges on it. And uh, they all sharpen in a forward direction. So with a helical head, they're all tipped over at an angle a little bit and slice. But the new one has, that I've got is a very small machine. And I've done that because I don't use big stuff anymore. So I'm, I've toned it down. I've gone to a small under and over machine. So my big long bed jointer, which does a <laughs> magic job, I'm selling. So if you're interested, send me a, a message or email. Or the email link is in the description box below the video. Um, obviously, Australia only and probably Sydney only would be the best because you don't really want, want to have to go transporting it it's big and heavy and it costs you a fortune to get it transported when it's assembled. So if you're in Sydney or the Blue Mountains or whatever and you're after a long bed jointer that's in really nice nick and you know that I look after my gear, it's for sale. Back to this. I'm going to switch over the cameras to this guy on the side here so you can be nice and close. Where are we? Camera three. That's the fellow right there. I've made the... Uh, I've made the brightness a little bit brighter. I've lifted it up because there's a fair few black things in this. So I just wanted to make it so it was easier for you to see it. So this is how I sharpen my drill bits. This is very similar to the Drill Doctor 750X, uh, which is a great machine. I have put a link in the description box below uh, to be able to get one. It's on Amazon in the States, but they do deliver to Australia and it's about half the price that they used to be in Australia. So if you'd need to, just watch what I'm doing. You make your choice up later on. This is basically a drill chuck on its own, but it's designed to hold onto the drill bit. And it's got a couple of little lugs on the side here and on the other side. So if you're looking at it that way, you might see those lugs. All right, so I'm going to open this up and it's, slowly, if you can look down the inside, 
it's opening the jaws up. A little bit more, a little bit more, and then we're going to slide the drill in. Possibly from this end might be easier. So I'm going to hold it on the end of the chuck with my left hand and then slowly open it until it goes in. Okay, it's sitting in there. I'm not going to tighten it up a heap. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn, like so. Now, on the top of the machine, you see there's a little lever here. And when I open that up, it's going to open up a pair of jaws. Can you see those jaws opening up inside the machine there? Now, what they're going to do is they're going to get a hold of the flutes. It will grab a hold of the side of the flutes, not on the top or the outside diameter of the drill. So it's going to, it's going to go into those two guys there. Now, as they twist, it's, it's going to work. Don't worry. Now, I'm going to slide it in to here. Now, there's two recesses. Before I slide in there, there's a recess here and a recess on this side. And that's for these two lugs to locate in on both sides. Now, as I push it in, I'll turn it around sideways so you can see that. As I push it into, I'm going to open the jaws up inside. It's going to grab the flutes for me, and I'm going to turn it and push it in, and then rotate. That's it. If you see inside there, I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to get it so you can see. I'll use my pointer. Okay, so down in here is the drill. These jaws have grabbed the side Grab the flutes. Okay. Ah. Ah. Well, there you go, Kiwi. Well, interesting. There are um, little things that you can get so that you can change the voltage. But have a look. I didn't mention what. The uh, pat pending. Okay. Okay. All right. So this one, <clears throat> I'm sure if you were to have a look on Amazon, you could probably still find the, these kind of things anywhere, you know, whether it's on Amazon in England, Australia, or the States. I just thought that the, uh, is a pretty good buy. Anyway, this is going to slide into here. And this thing rocks. So as I turn it, it's as I push it in, there's a grinding wheel in here. You can see that down there. I think it's diamond. And what it's going to do, it's going to do that backing off of the point. It works well. Let's give it a try and see how we go. Now we got, you can see it's a filthy old drill bit there. It doesn't take long. This is so quick. Turn her on. She's nice and quiet. When I put it in here, it will make a little bit of noise, so you may want to turn it down a little. That's one side done. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. It's nearly finished. There's just a little bit there needs to be done. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. That's still that one side. So I've got to get the other side now. Come on. And rotate it 
rotate it to the other side. That's super quick and reliable. Yep, sounds like a good idea, Derek. I'm going to just give that a little bit more of a touch that way. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Turn that off. Undo this. Take it out. That, my friends, is as sharp as I will ever need it. You can feel it. You can tell a sharp drill bit just by doing that slowly. Don't push hard, but you'll feel it wanting to catch your skin. Magic. Now I'll show you on a smaller one. Let's go to the other camera. Now this, which one is it? my five millimeter? This one here. This is, well, you can, a lot of people have got transformers already. Okay, this one is a VIX style bit. It's not an original VIX bit. So I undo the tip. That's the, the casing around the outside. There is a spring inside there, so be careful it doesn't go flying. And then I'm going to take off, I don't know if I need to, but I I think I might. I'm going to take the drill out of the housing. That was pretty easy. It's just there's a, a grub screw there with a hex nut in it. And slide this in. Close that up first. Pretty cool, I love it. To about there, you can see it's got a hold of it. And this is a five millimeter drill bit. We're gonna put it into the uh, guide down here. Open up the jaws. I'm gonna do a few, cause then it's just a whole lot easier. There we go. And now that it's in there and clamped and all the way in, rotate it again, like so. Take it out and you notice that it doesn't come out anywhere near as far as the big one did. It centers it for it. All right. There we go. Pop it in. This is going to be quicker. Rotate it 180 degrees, put it back in. That, my friends, is finished. Undo it. Don't know if you can see how good that is. But that is super sharp. What I'm going to do is pop it in a drill and give it a test on something. What have I got here? A bit of pine. Let's see how it goes. That works pretty quick. Go in again. Done. <laughs> Try the big fellow. Just straight in. I'm being a little bit cautious there. Done. Beautiful. And another one just to prove it wasn't a fluke. I don't want to drill a hole through my bench, so I'm trying to line the drill up with 
the hole underneath. There we go. Beautiful. Very quick and nice clean hole. There we go. So they work. They work a treat. And I'm going to put this back. I don't know if they've changed the design, Peter. Do you reckon they might have? When you're putting these back in, into the holder, you need to make sure that the, there's a flat section on these drills. I'll undo that a little bit. Take it up. See, there's a little flat section there. And that's for the grub screw to lock onto so it doesn't rotate. So I'm just moving it backwards and forwards with my thumb and forefinger just to make sure that it's good. There we go. So that's back in there. And then slide it back into here and onto there. And all of a sudden, something that was giving me grief is now going to work beautifully again. I love it. Um, I've got a heap over here. I'm not going to bore you with doing all of them. But this one is, is really in a bad way. See that drill bit there? I don't know what I've been drilling with that. But the tip is absolutely stuffed. So we'll do this one. This will be the last one we'll do. Then we'll go on to a... Um, actually, now what we, what we might do is I'll do this one, then we'll go into a viewer's project. Push in. Yep. I'm going to do this one, then we'll do a view viewer's project. What's the minimum drill size that will accommodate? I'm going to have a look at that in a second, Carl. Give me a minute. We'll do this. Now this is, this is really good because it, the drill was in such a bad state that the, it's been probably one that I've done on the grinder and I've backed off. You can see the shiny part and then down to my fingernail is not shiny. So I'm going to put it back into the jig here and release the tension on it and push it in a bit deeper. Because because on that grind, what happened, it, it only went down to a certain depth. It's trying to keep that same angle as it's going down. Let me come down this way. As it's coming down, it's going to work better. And it still look like mine. Nothing wrong with either. Kind of like the way yours works. There are times the 90 degree twist is favorable over the 180. Uh, in the past, I've broken bits and replaced by grinding a flat spot. <laughs> what I normally do when, I, when I've had a drill bit bl go blunt, I kind of throw it in a drawer and buy a new one. And that's what I've been doing all the time before I got this. Because I tried sharpening them by hand and it was just a joke. Never worked. Might want to turn the sound down again a little bit. What a, what a difference. Look at that thing. That is absolutely beautiful. It's one of those simple things. And the top, the top is regular as well. So if you're looking at the drill there, I'm going to rotate it. 
So you're seeing the other side. It works very, very well. I'm going to try, because this one, I was going to throw it in the bin, but still, there's still plenty of length on the drill, so why throw it away? And how about, pardon me, we try it on some hardwood this time. I've got a bit of Jarrah here. And Jarrah isn't really all that forgiving as far as it's an extremely dense and hard timber. Here we go. Straight through, not a problem. Very quick. And there's no, no rubbish left on the drill. There you go. Love it, love it, love it. So on a rainy, rainy day, you can get all your drill bits out and just go crazy with something like, like that. And so if you want to get that one, in the States, grab it. If you want to grab one of these, do a search anywhere on the web, you know, suit yourself. I put a link there to give you a head start. Now, if you go in through that link, that's where I found one. Your call, whatever you want to do. Put that to the side and let me see. Now, this guy, I said if your name starts with P, well, if your first name is Peter, this could well be yours. <laughs> I'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the show. Viewers projects. Blow all that out of the way. You can turn the volume up. I'm not going to use that for a little bit longer. Uh, what have we got? We have Joe. Now, Joe sent some stuff into me this morning. Normally, I don't respond to things that are sent to me on a Sunday morning because I'm flat out trying to get the show ready. I'm down here at seven o'clock in the morning for an 11 o'clock start. There's four hours. <laughs> you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Anyway, so Joe says, hi Dave, Merry Christmas to you and Vicky. Here are a few pictures I've snapped along the way building my wife Debbie's Christmas present. Let's have a look what, she, what he's doing here. So obviously the Craig support there is not his, uh, oh, you'll be Peter today with you, John. <laughs> the, the, uh, the workbench he's setting up there is not his Christmas present. It's from a sheet of three quarter inch plywood from Home Depot. And I'm guessing that's a place over in the States. And he's got it on one of my benches there. He's got his track saw out, ready to go. Um, our modification of a plan on Woodsmith Magazine. Let's keep going. He's got his Bosch glide saw there and he's cutting some angles. Uh, and ideas. We'll keep going. It's a bit of a uh, mystery as to what it is. Uh, they, there's the panels that he's shaped up. I think they're the ends, and I would be quite right in calling them ends or gables because this is actually going to end up being, he's just checking for size, it's making sure it's all working with the dogs and keeping it 90 degrees. This is going to be a free library. So he says, uh, our modification of a plan in Woodsmith magazine and ideas Debbie has collected from other little libraries that we've visited. So I think this is a library for books and stuff to be put outside. So if you want to read a book, I don't know where he's going to put this, but maybe it's out in the street. Maybe it's inside the house. I don't know, but it seems to be kind of weatherproof. I like those little trims there. It looks like someone's hair at the front. Um, there's the, the top for it. And this is the back showing pocket hole constructions. Let's go back to here. He's nearly finished it. Um, this is from Joe Larson. And I think that's fantastic. So that's community spirit. And what a great idea. So Joe, is it books? Or is it other stuff as well? If you're not watching the show right at the moment, you might be able to leave a comment after the show. That'd be great. Love to, love to hear what you're thinking about it. If you've got a little project like that, send it in. Send it in. 
The Home Depot, Menards and Lowe's are the three biggest big box stores in the US, similar to Bunnings. All oh, right. Uh, it will go in front of our house. Well, I think that's a fantastic community spirit, Joe. That's brilliant. Uh, that's absolutely great. I'm going to sharpen another drill. You like that, baby. <laughs> uh, before I sharpen the drill, I'm going to show you something that I've been working on during the week. One of my granddaughters is going out with a fella and she, uh, she said, Granddad, can you make up a charcuterie board for him or for, for his mum? And uh, I said, yeah, why not? So that's the engraving that I was doing on the CNC. So this is how it's come up and it looks quite nice. This will be a, a nice, I think that's a good size. It's not too heavy, uh, it works well. And so while I was doing that, I thought, you know what? I'll make you up a cheese board at the same time. So what do you think of the carving on the CNC? It's just a magic job, it works really well. So it's a nice little flat board. If they want to, they can have it down this way or they can flip it up that way. All right. So, um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? We're going to do another drill bit. I'm going to take, which one are we going to do? Done, done, done. Don't they look good when they've been, come back over here, when they've been sharpened? It's just, you can see the glint on them and you know that they're sharp. Um, let me have a look here. Richie, the Netherlands, how about sharpening Brad Point drill bits? Can't do it. I can't do it. You need one of those diamond files to get in underneath it. Those little spurs make it almost impossible. It's the same with um, speed bores or spade bits, a lot of people call them. When I uh, sharpen those, I grind the wings off. Gone. Okay. Nicely done, Joe. Uh, hi, Peter. Does Carbotex sell zero clearance tape? Zero clearance tape. Now, what? Explain a little bit, please, Peter. While I'm thinking about all sorts of other things while I'm doing the show, I may not be focusing full on on zero clearance tape. Is this something for putting on a piece of wood before you, you cut it so that you've got nice clean edges? Um, no, I didn't think it would, Peter. Well, you could. You could throw it in and uh, end up with a steel style drill bit. Uh, why not a Zoom show? Well, because we're not. Um, hi from the UK. How are you, Dave? And have a good, have a good, do you have a wood lathe? I do, Henry, yes. So my wood lathe, I don't know if you've seen. This might be a Vix. Yeah, I think this is. Now, this is a, this is a tiny drill bit because Carl asked earlier how small they'd go down to. So let's see if I can get it in here. Heavy tape to zero clearance, a mitre saw. No, I've got, uh, Steve Innes gave me a, um, some inserts that dropped into my capex and you cut straight away. And they're, I think they're made by Butterly, is, it, is that the name of the mob on the internet? I oh, wouldn't you know it. The Vix bit doesn't have the same size there. So let's go for one of these other ones. So this is a really small drill bit in this one. We'll open this up. And undo this. Careful of the spring that we don't lose all of that. This is a this is a one eighth bit or very close to it, maybe three millimeters. I'll slide it in the end there, tighten her up until it starts to grab. Well, that's it's got a hold of that. Let's give it a try, Carl. Um, I'll slide it into the, I don't know if you can watch from that end. It might be easier to see from there. I'm sliding it in and the, opening the jaws up, going to push in until it lines up there. There we go. It's all the way in and the jaws have got it. Now I can rotate it and bring it out. 
Look how close it is. I'll turn, I'll do it from, from your side so you can see all the, how it happens. Turn her on first. Turn the sound down a little bit. There she goes. Rotate it 180 degrees. There she goes. How cool is that? Can you see the shiny on it? Crack her open. And they're not hot. See that? I'm touching the part that was just sharpened. I'm going to flick her over this side to the other camera. Um, Henry, I'm not a lathe person. I used the lathe when I was doing some things. Now, let me see, what was I doing? I was, uh, I'll just go to the other camera. On all of my Turner hand planes, I used the lathe a lot to polish. So I made little jigs up and away I went. I have been threatening to do some stuff with the lathe. Vicky's got a project on at the moment for the lathe and we've got something on a faceplate down here somewhere. There it is, when I can get it out. So Vicky's doing this, so she's got this piece of jarrah mounted on a faceplate and she's been working away on the outside and she'll probably revisit this pretty soon. The jarrah is extremely hard and it's not, it's not great uh, for, for turning. We've got the carbide tools there, we'll probably start using those and you know cutting into the uh this area here see this is basically like using a plane against the grain you're going to get tear out so we have to get around that but we'll get there so in answer to your question no I'm, my background is more construction and uh, a little bit of cabinet making not not turning i find wood turners are a breed of their own. Is that, is that being rude? I don't mean it in a nasty way, but oh, how good is that? Let's just, I'll come back to this camera here because it's just beautiful. See that? Just pops out lovely. So these are a self-centering drill bit. And you'll notice on mine, I ground all of the tops so that they would drop into the chamfer better. I found that these were too flat and they weren't centering properly in the holes. So these are ideal for hinges and I use them also for my uh, draw slides. Okay, happy holidays to everyone and a better new year. Dave, can you hold it closer to the camera? It's awful small. Okay, is it focusing there all right for you, Wally? And when I pull it back out this way, As a turner, I, I do, but I like all types of woodworking as well. Give it another 20 years and you'll be <laughs> You like doing lathe work, do you, Matthew? All right, let's have a look, pardon me, at the next thing. Um, let's have a look at Vicky's cabinet. So at the moment, there it is in the room where it's going to live. Now I've got the, you can see on the right hand side, that's the drawer. The big drawer that the project she's working on will live in. She'll just get it out and pop it up on the on the quilting machine and away she'll go. And on the left hand side you can see the top drawer is open with the insert and uh, Vicky's no slouch when it comes to putting stuff on top. She's going to use that in the meantime. Uh, so that's some of the stuff that she's, she's already created with the quilting machine. The patterns are unbelievable. Basically, it's a CNC, but designed for sewing. You can see on the right-hand side, I've got 
two full slide, uh, two full extension uh, draw slides to take the weight and the size of that thing. That's why I thought, you know, piano hinge, not a good idea. Let me see what else we got here. All right, this is the insert. So we did talk about those herbs and spices uh, spaces in that insert would be good for the for the reels for the cotton, and they are absolutely brilliant. So they're they're reels for the uh, for the overlocker, and also for the sewing machine. So, Pam, I'm guessing you're watching here now, and Cole's going to have to make one of these for you. Next drawdown, down, she's got some hoops in. So you stretch the material out inside these hoops, and then that locks onto the machine. And the machine, the, the, the uh, part that does the sewing stays stationary and the job gets moved around underneath. It's, a, it's just a really nice way of uh, doing stuff. It's just magic. And so on the left-hand side of where that box is now, that, that uh, draw unit, is where the part where the machine is going to be recessed into the top. There'll be another unit the same size as that pushed up against it. So it'll be six feet by three foot uh, four and uh, then so she's, she's going to have a fantastic space there. So it's 1.8 by a meter is the size of the actual top. Dave, you can show us your new planar jointer. I could do um, at, the, at work on Monday. Yeah, yes, it is amazing. Um, all right, well, we can have a quick look at that if you want to. I'll go to camera three. And I'll bring the camera down this way. So this is the new machine I've got. And I'll do a quick walkthrough. I've done a fair bit of video on it, but it's not completed yet. Uh, this is a 10 inch machine, 250 millimeters, with a full helical head in there. So all of those knives, can be rotated. It's got a European style guard, which is fine. I just pull it back a little bit. Um, and if I'm putting flat stuff over it, I don't go under the guard like you're supposed to. I go, I just pull the timber back to the width that I need and put the timber over it and then just put that back as a guard. Now, there's a couple of things that uh, I can tell you about it. One of the things is if you want good dust extraction with these types of machines, uh, a lot of people complain about the dust extraction on them, and I'm sorry to say it's your own fault. <laughs> Let me tip this camera up a little bit more. That should, that should get me. All right, so when it's set up as a jointer, and I'll tell you something else, this is so easy to set up to get it parallel and coplanar and everything. It's a breeze. This is the easiest machine I've ever had to, the pleasure of doing it on. From, the top, when, from when it was in the box to set up, tuned and running took me 30 minutes. That's, I love it. <laughs> anyway, so when you have it in jointer mode, and look how easy it is to flip it over, make sure that you have the table for when it's in thickness mode, all the way down. If you don't have it all the way down, the dust hood can't come back up and make contact here. So if it's down like, if it's down a little bit, you're gonna have a massive area between here and this point. See that? And all of the chips are gonna go out there. So, with any of this style of machine, that's how you do it. Make sure that it can go all the way down so this part of the, the um, dust guard can come right up and make contact with this guy here. When it's in, uh, in thicknessing mode, that just slides straight over the top. And I feed timber in from this side. The, uh, it's got a wheel, pardon, it's got a, it's got a wheel that goes down to one tenth of a millimeter in, in a, as you're winding it up and down, you can, set this so accurately. It's only a small footprint in my workshop. It's a three horse machine, but I'm running it. So it's a 15 amp for Australia, but I'm running it through my amphibian into a 10 amp outlet. 
and it has never stopped. It's never faulted. And I've put full width through at possibly just under a millimeter thickness in pass. The cut this thing does is astounding. So there you go. I can't, I can't tell you more than that. Um, I, I got it from Carbotech. I did buy it. I get a staff discount, obviously, but I did buy it. I do have an affiliate link in the description for you buying stuff from Carbotech. If you want to, you can have a look and uh, use my link if you can, because that obviously helps me out to buy more toys here. <laughs> uh, I'll put it all back into the show. And uh, it's, it's just, just beautiful. It does a very, very nice job. The teeth on it, only minimally better, only minimally on an extremely figured timber, minimally better than on my long bed jointer. But, you know, instead of having a, the long bed jointer running from here two metres along, this one is only around about 1.1, maybe 1.2 metres long. So very, very happy with it. Uh, it was more expensive than the long bed jointer. But it's one of those things when you get it back there, you must lock it because that helps get it back to its exact position for the beds to be coplanar and working with the head correctly. I have started doing a video on it. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, life has been busy. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So uh, the, there's a few companies make these kind of things. Jet make one, Carbotech make one. Um, there's... Uh, there's a couple from Europe are made as well. It's a nice machine, very, very easy to use and strong. And as I say, three horse machine and it's running off my amp Fibian, this thing here. Okay, you're probably coming out of focus because I've set the focus to be working at the, it's got a circuit breaker in it. So if it senses that it's going to go past what a 10 amp circuit can handle, it will trip and stop and keep everything safe. These things, don't plug them into an extension lead. They have to go directly to the power point. This one, now that I've said that, mine is plugged into an extension lead, but that extension lead, there is a 20 amp lead. So it's an extremely high capacity cable. So it's, it's probably got four millimeter twin and earth cables in it, where you know, a 15 amp is normally Two and a half millimeter twin and earth. All right, back over here, and uh, hopefully that's filled in a couple of things for you. Uh, let me switch this camera back. Um, you like the machine? I I think it's wonderful. I'm. I'll have to go back and have a read of all the different things that you've got in there. So I'll do that later on after the show. Now, another viewer's project. We've got 10 minutes to go, why not? So we have Matt. Dave, I have the Hammer 12 inch plane. It looks exactly the same as yours. Awesome, especially with the helical cutter heads. Dave, I, I love them. I don't have the need for a big long machine anymore. Like, don't get me wrong, that machine was fantastic. And I had a few people have come up and we've run longer. Uh, pieces like four meters, five meters long, and the long bed joint up was ideal for that. This thing wouldn't be as good. But, um, Aussie man, thick copper wire carries more current. Yes, uh, Kiwi, normal extension leads are only one or 1 1.5 millimeters. Well, that one there is designed for solar, so and it's a 20 amp rating on it. So it's going to be a whole lot more than one or one and a half millimeter. Uh, let me see, what have we got? Um, yeah, the next person, Matt Hall. Now, Matt is a guy who made some stuff, never never made anything in his life, and had been watching the show and some of my videos and decided, well, why not? Let's give it a shot. Bought himself a heap of Bessie clamps and some pocket hole jigs and all that kind of stuff, and away he went. Now, he sent me some updates on what he's doing. You can see he leaves his <laughs> Bessies on the floor there. Uh, let me see. Thought I'd sh uh, Merry Christmas, Dave. Thought I'd share a quick update on my home office project. The good news is the wall cabinets haven't fallen on my head and the project is almost complete. Please excuse the mess and the vertical photos. I'm still working on the project and putting things away, so I haven't tidied up as yet. And it was the only way I could get the tall units in the frame. 
The first four photos are a left to right around most of the room with everything here finished and in place. So let's go to the next photo. Now, does that make you remember the, the project? Um, the unit to the right of the window is an IKEA filing cabinet, but everything else has been made from scratch. Then we keep on moving through the pictures. I think this is fantastic. What a great room. So on the right hand side of that, you'll see that that's the IKEA cabinet, the filing cabinet. We'll go to that picture now. Uh, the tall drawer unit in the fourth pick was the most recently finished and also my first time doing drawers. Oh, well, that maybe is the unit that he's, that he's talking about. That's not the IKEA. I used your pocket hole method of assembly on the drawers, though I may, I may have gone overboard on the number of screws, and the carcass is primarily domino joinery, at, pardon me, as per all the other units. All have been made from 16, 16 millimeter melamine. How good is that? The wall not shown is where the final unit I'm currently working on will go. Let me see if this last picture. There we go. Uh, there's a work in progress shot of that piece that I'm calling a bookshelf. It'll be styled similar to the desk front. It's being made from 18 millimeter melamine MDF rather than the 16, as I thought this may be stronger for the longer spans. I'll send further pics when it's all done, hopefully before the new year. Uh, once again, thank you for all your videos and shared knowledge. These are all firsts for me and I've certainly learned a lot along the way. There's a few things I'd do differently, but overall, I'm very happy with the results, though it has taken considerably longer than I'd planned. Regards, Matt. That's terrific. What do you reckon? You know, it's not hard. It'll, the, the thing is getting past that self-doubt stage where, oh, you know, I don't know if I could do that. That looks really nice. I don't know if I could do it. It doesn't matter. Have a go, do, practice on some scrap to start with and see how it goes. And if you decide you want to go ahead with it and build something fantastic like that home office that Matt's done or that fantastic uh, community spirited book library that uh, Joseph has done, I think, it, I think it's great. Uh, doesn't it look great, baby? You're not getting one. You're getting, a, you're getting your quilting table. That's, that's what you're getting. Okay, so that is all of the viewers' projects. And what, are we, what time is it now? About seven minutes to go. I'm going to sharpen another drill bit. Which one have we got here? That's the five. I've already done that one. Let's see the smallest drill bit that it'll take. Now I'm going to bring these over. And we've got, I've got one and a half is the smallest drill bit that I've got there. I don't think it'll do that. That's the smallest that it will take. So let's see if a two millimeter will get stuck in there. No, it won't do a two. Two and a half. Oh, it's just missing on a two and a half. Three millimeters. Yes, it'll do a three. So we'll touch this one up. This is, this is a three millimeter, not a one eighth. Oh, the winner. You want the winner because your name's Peter. But it's not you, Peter. Let me have a look. <laughs> Is that the only reason you've been hanging around, mate? You're probably out the door now. <laughs> oh, stop this. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to finish sharpening this drill bit, then I'll, I'll tell you who it is. <laughs> Tighten that up a little bit. Slide this in, push that in there, let go of the jaws, and let's see if it'll rotate. Ooh, we run into a bit of trouble when they get this small. Just gonna rotate that ever so slightly. Got it, that's got it. So there you go. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Merry Christmas to David. <laughs> so this is a three millimeter drill bit. And this is the smallest, smallest, smallest. Still hang around and you're not Peter. But I thought you were getting your name changed by Depulp, <laughs> Peter. Uh, John, I, well, I called you Peter just then. Maybe, John. But the thing is, it was Australia and New Zealand. Turn the volume down a little bit. We'll do this last one. I'm loving it. Whoop, over here. Focus. <laughs> Thank you.
What a great job. Popping in again. Just to touch that last little bit. Turn it off. Take this out. That's absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you can see that, but it's as sharp as sharp as sharp. Let's put it in a drill and give it a test. I'm only doing this to upset all the Peters watching. Let's go into the, into the Jarrah. Let's see how we go. You watching? Magic, absolutely beautiful. There we go, I've drawn it out enough. Let's have a look. The winner, 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 chicken dinner. Um, let me see if there's anything else. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that to you. Um, Peter, if your surname starts with R, you're also in the winning, in the, in the running for it. One of the other things, I, <laughs> am I annoying you now? Someone thought that this was magnetic. It's not, there's a pin here. When you push this down, there's a steel pin, pushes down and makes contact with the base here. So it's not magnetic at all. When you slide that in there, I can push that and it locks. Slide it backwards, it locks. I think that's enough pain. Okay, so it's uh, Peter Rosewarn. Peter Rosewarn, you are the winner, buddy. And I will get Carbotec to send one of these out to you this week, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Now, also the person who won my parallel guides over in uh, Canada, I have had a lot of mucking around here, as I said, over the last couple of weeks, and they're getting picked up by the courier in the morning, and the courier has told us it will arrive by the 23rd of December. That's from Australia to Canada in two days. Can you believe it? I can't. I can't believe it. So congratulations to the winner. Uh, I think it was Darcy, Mr. Darcy. Anyway, it's out the door in the morning, all packed up, couriers all booked. You'll have it before Christmas. That's what they've told us. Uh, Kiwi, just read COVID explained via soccer rules. Shoots a goal equals you are allowed three more players on the field, opponent team uh, prevents a goal, one player is sent off the field. Tired of winning it. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, congrats, Peter. Congratulations, Peter. Uh, Paul, unlucky. You, uh, you thought you were in the running right at the beginning, didn't you? <laughs> that didn't happen. I'm a horrible person. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will be doing this live stream on the 20... What's today? 20th? On the 27th. So it's the day after Boxing Day, I think. 26th is Boxing Day. 27th is... Uh, is uh, Dave's live stream. Why not? All right. I think that's it. We'll have a quick Patreon chat after the show. If anyone's interested, you must be one of my patrons. You have to go to patreon.com through the link that I've got down the bottom. And if you join as in become a patron, which helps the show along, uh, that'd be much appreciated. And we get to have a little bit of a chat about what's happening around the world and it's not really about woodworking, but, you know, some people ask me questions there and that's fine as well. Hi, GrooveJet. How are you? You came in right at the end. <laughs> okay. Let me see. What have we got down here? And I'm hoping you're catching up with Cole and also Pam from the Gifkins Jig videos that they're doing the live show. I think they're having a couple of days off, a couple of weeks off. Um, I'm not because I haven't got a life. <laughs> Put it bluntly. Oh, yes, I do. I've got a great life. Um, okay, intro and text. There we go. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see everyone next week. Bye.